A while back, I had done a deep dive in the Valley of the Judge series on Level Up 5e, under the premise that it was a advanced version of D&D 5th Edition. Now, the results of that was disappointing, as I've made clear in the past, but I did still feel that a advanced 5e was going to show up in some form or another. Some overhaul of the rule set that had a lot of the DNA within it, but was going in a more complex direction. Not necessarily one that fixes all the problems I have with 5e, but one that adds a degree of customization that 5e doesn't want to do. Heavens and Heresies kinda has that, but that's one way it's done, and I don't want that one way to be the be-all, end-all. Enter Mythis. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I was sent some of the preview material for this, as the Kickstarter is not out yet at the time of this recording, and obviously the book is not out yet. That's the reason why I'm doing this as an unimpressions instead of a Valley of the Judged. From what I have seen, a lot of the standard DNA is still there. The attributes, the skills, the proficiency bonus, and so on. Backgrounds are not necessarily present, but I always felt backgrounds were a little bit undercooked anyways. And the class setup is not there, but we'll get to that. So, when it comes to the standard fair stuff, the closest thing is going to be attributes. It is rolled randomly instead of being point by, which is interesting given what we're going to cover later. Though there are multiple tiers of rolling die, including a regular, a low-powered level, and an epic level. But it's still the same six ability scores, and it still generates modifiers the same way as you're familiar with. Now, this is where we start really getting into some of the changes. The first one I want to talk about is Adventure Points. There are no levels in Mythos. Adventure Points is what's used instead, and everything revolves around Adventure Points. Adventure Points can be used to upgrade your attributes, upgrade skills, gain traits, get either full or half proficiency in something, or even increase your proficiency bonus, period. Now granted, that's at a maximum of 6 still, but certain angles of the game will use your proficiency bonus in different ways. We'll get into that. Now, races are the standard fantasy races, but each one has a set of subtypes called ethnicities, which is where you get a lot of the racial modifiers. Unlike Wizards of the Coast, they didn't get rid of racial modifiers, they just doubled and shifted them. However, even with your choice of ethnicity, each race is going to get a certain set of features out of the gate. Now, I said earlier that there's no classes. Instead, what we have here are archetypes, which are somewhat reminiscent of archetypes in something like Rollmaster or Anima, if only because of the fact that it's a package that has some direction. Now, an archetype grants ba a set of base features and a set of exclusive features that you can purchase with AP. I think it should be made clear what's free and what costs AP, but I can see where they're going with this. And there's also specializations in the form of paths. Paths, in this instance, are more like prestige classes. But I'm hoping that in the full game, there's a bit more distinction made as far as how multi-classing works and what you'd have to do to qualify for a path, or even to qualify for another archetype. Is it something you'd have to buy in with AP, or do you just have to meet prerequisites? Because depending on how that works out, I could see some people getting a little crazy with multi-classing. Now, when it comes to skills, we have an actual skill list. This isn't the one page worth of skill list that you see in, say, any version of D&D, even 3rd edition. Instead, this has more akin to the skill-based games like Exalted, Legend of the Five Rings, Shadowrun, or any number of games that rely on an attribute skill setup. It is far, far larger. And this is a blessing and a curse. Because of how many skills in multiple categories there are, you can run the risk of analysis paralysis, and I do think some sort of package that could be purchased is something to consider for down the road. I'm not sure if they're going to actually do it, but that's what I would suggest if I were in their position. Now, there's also not feats, but instead talents, 
which are analogous to feats, but more like feats in previous editions than in the more ubiquitous one. This is due to the fact that, like everything else, you spend AP to get talents. You can also gain AP through negative talents. Also, I like that they're categorized into combat, attribute, physical, mental, and social. That said, I would recommend having a chart somewhere that has all the AP costs so one can see how they stack. Kind of like the feat list or the talent list in something like Dark Heresy. Now, armor trades the traditional armor class for damage reduction a la Fantasy Craft. There is technically armor class, but in this game, armor class is a broad classification for light, medium, and heavy armor. Additionally, it's here where Mythos shows that armor has localized protection. In other words, armor for head, body, arms, legs, and so on. There's also fatigue rules for sleeping in it, and armor encumbrance does play a factor in things like stamina. Now, weapons double down on damage type, with bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, and swing piercing. Each of these have their own damage multipliers that can be triggered, depending on the target's armor. In addition, a lot of weapons require a certain amount of strength. And if you don't meet the minimum strength score, the weapon is considered to have the unbalanced trait. These usually range from 9 to 14. Now, magic is point-based, and it works largely similar to the 5e standard of having a spell attack and a spell DC. That said, spells do not use the Vancian model per se, but you do have to spend time learning them in order to, well, use them. In addition, the same set of spheres isn't utilized with the spell lists, but it is categorized by colleges instead. Some examples of colleges are protection, mind, communication, fire, etc. I do like that there is a relationship between proficiency bonus and the components needed for spells. Like at a lower proficiency bonus, things like gestures and speaking loudly are going to be necessary, but at higher tiers and with certain talents, you won't need as much. Also, I appreciate that spell capping is handled using a talent called Magical Potential, which determines the highest mana cost you can spend at. Another thing that I appreciate, there's no separation between Arcane and Divine. It's just a spell list. Now, combat is standard fare, although I'd say it has more leanings to older editions than the current ones. And in addition, it has both HP and Wounds, the former being retitled as Vigor. It's a nice way to demonstrate how much you can take, but how you'll be punished by making too many mistakes. Now in combat, you have three active defensive options instead of the opponent just rolling to hit a static defense. You can block if you have a shield, and shields provide bonuses to block instead of providing damage reduction. If you have a melee weapon, you can opt to parry, and everyone can dodge. Though, of course, not all attacks can be dodged. Combat actions are more akin to 3E or 4E, with the fact that you have an economy of actions through Major, Minor, Move, and Free. Additionally, Stamina can be used as an extra effort pool, spending points before rolling a check to add a bonus die to that check. This starts at D4 and can cap at D12, but doing a D12 is going to cost you 5 points of Stamina. There's a lot more that I've glossed over, but that's simply because this is still a work in progress, and I don't want to speak definitively on something that may end up changing by the time the game comes out. But all in all, Mythos feels like an actual advanced 5e, instead of the half-in, half-out attempt that I saw with Level Up 5e. There's a bit more of a grounded approach, as well as being more freeform. If I can offer any advice, as I've mentioned a couple times, I'd like to have some sort of appendix to quickly see the AP cost for certain aspects, as well as some sort of package system for skills, traits, and proficiencies. I guess a good parallel example to what I'm talking about is the way combat modules had packages for weapons when it comes to sailor, knight, mercenary, and so on. I can see a lot of potential with this system, but it's going to take into account that analysis paralysis is a thing once you open up the floodgates. I'd say this is especially a good choice for people who've played D&D but grown tired of the limitations presented within it. Stay frosty! Stay frosty.